Ian, in the end, uh, was it a case of ruining the chances you didn't take in the first half? Yes, I think without a shadow of a doubt. I think we had a sort of spell for sort of 15, 20 minutes before half time where we totally dominated the game, created sort of three or four chances. Um, and that only followed on from really the first 10, 15 minutes where we again had two or three chances to have scored and we missed them. Um, they obviously kept in the game at nil nil, and uh, you know a mistake from Charlie, sort of 15, 20 minutes into the second half, and it's cost us. And it's disappointing really because there's been a lot of effort gone in today, but I just felt some of the quality was missing, and certainly some of the composure in the final third uh, certainly wasn't there as it was two weeks ago at Chelmsford. So overall, disappointing result. You mentioned the mistake from the skipper, obviously a poor back pass. Uh, how's he taken it? He's obviously disappointed, you know, and Charlie's, Charlie's big enough to hold his hand up and accept responsibility. But again, he has to be better from that side of it. You know, he is a skipper um, and he has to lead by example. And it's just disappointing that we've, we've lost a game where for long periods we've totally dominated to a mistake. And we said that at half time, we warned them that some of the chances that we'd missed might come back and, and haunt us, which it, which it proved right in the end. You kept the players out on the pitch uh, in chilly conditions for quite a while afterwards. Was that because you were unhappy with the performance? No, we do that every week. Um, it's just probably a little bit longer today, only because we, you know, I felt there was a few things we needed to discuss. There was a few things that I felt today we didn't do what we did against Carlisle, and we, and we can't do it against Carlisle and not do it against Gloucester. And it's not being disrespectful to Gloucester, but we have to turn up week in, week out, uh, and then we have to do that on a regular basis um, because. You know, we've got the Carlisle game on Tuesday and we've obviously got the league coming up and it's important now that, that we get out of the regulation battle that we're in at the moment because we're fourth from bottom and our performances in the league haven't been good enough. You weren't helped, clearly, uh, in your chase for an equaliser by the sending off a straight red card. What did you make of it? Um, I felt it was the same challenge that went in from their lad on Greg Morgan after five minutes and I think the difference is that um, if their lad had made the challenge ten minutes from the end then he would have got a red straight red card and, and I think it's just unfortunate it's a different stage of the game. And I said that to the referee afterwards. I felt both challenges were exactly the same. I felt both challenges were fair. I felt both challenges won the ball. Um, and really, I thought it was harsh on a yellow card, let alone on a red card from our lad. And I just felt was very, very disappointed with the decision. So, yeah, so you didn't think it was a red card, essentially, no? Not from where I was. It was 10 yards in front of me. I felt, I felt um, Raheem had gone for the ball. He's 18 years of age. He's a forward. They don't tackle great. But I felt he'd won the ball. Um, and he came out with the ball. And I felt that at the end of the day, when you've got two people challenging, in a, in, a, in a cup tie like it was today, they were hanging on, they were obviously fighting for their lives to get the result. We wanted to obviously get the result and unfortunately challenges have gone out of the game and it's disappointing because for me, you know, he's a young lad learning the game and, and I, thought, I thought it was a fair challenge from where I was. I mean, the referee will obviously have his decision, um, but I didn't think it was any worse than the, 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 the tackle that happened after five minutes in the game. It did look like he got a bit of the, the ball in there, but then maybe this sort of slid through with the two feet. You, you've seen them given. Do you think this is the way that the game is going now, that the, those tackles, that they, they have disappeared and, and that's a shame? Well, it certainly has disappeared because obviously in my time, you know, I played against people like Tommy Smith and, and, and defenders like that. And I knew if I didn't shift the ball or move myself out of the way, then I'd be clattered. So, you know, it, but it's, it, it was no intent to, to injure anybody there. He's gone, clearly his eyes are on the ball. Clearly he's won the ball for me. Um, and as I said to you, he's, a, he's an 18, 19 year old youth team player who's coming to the first team. It's his first year at this level uh, and they're going to make mistakes. But, you know, I think we need to look at both challenges and as I said earlier I felt both challenges were very very similar and I think if their one had happened later in the game then then that might have been a red instead of a yellow. You've already mentioned uh, Carlisle obviously you played them last week and, and the performance level was was high you've got them again on Tuesday do you think there was any chance that Tuesday's game meant that some of the players took their eye off the ball a bit today? I'll be disappointed if it has because certainly from my point of view and I've, I've expressed it all week on Tuesday Thursday and again before the game today and again at half time is that that Carlisle is the next game and it's got nothing to do with what we're doing today and uh, and if players have tried to leave things on the pitch or try to keep things back for Tuesday night then then you know I'd be very very disappointed from that side of it I don't think they have I just think you know the day we, we didn't take our chances when they came along and um, we got punished with a, with a mistake in the second half and the difference is they didn't make any mistakes and and when they did make one which is one obviously ball over the top the centre half missed it we failed to convert uh, a simple one-on-one -on -one, which they've gone and converted their opportunity Let's talk about Tuesday night then. Uh, first of all, I guess, uh, how much are you looking forward to it? Um, at the moment, not at all, because obviously we've just lost in the trophy and I really felt we could have had a, um, a good run in the trophy because we've played Cambridge and Luton in pre-season and we held our own against both them teams and that was, you know, our goal was to have a really good run in this because 
a little bit of luck and a little bit of a draw, then we can, you know, we could go quite a long way. But as you said, you know, we've got to get this defeat out of our system. Um, it obviously hurts now, so you know, we'll start planning, preparing virtually from tomorrow. Um, we know what we've got to do, and we said spoke to the lads after the after the game. You know what we've got to do. We've prepared correctly. The chairman have done everything right for us. Um, but it'd be a shame if we go up there and turn up and, and some of them put some performances which they've not quite put in today and I'll be very very disappointed if that happens. You said you know what you've got to do then, what is that? I think we've got to be organised first and foremost, we mustn't give any silly chances away like we've done today by, with a mistake. If we don't give any mistakes away, we don't give them opportunities in the first 20-25 minutes, they might start becoming a little bit frustrated. Uh, and we've certainly got an area where you know our, our defensive at the moment is very, very good. We've kept, I think, that's only the third goal that's gone in in the last 12 games against us. Two of them have been own goals and obviously the mistake today. So defensively we look sound. Um, obviously we'll have Mark Jones back for, for Tuesday night. Um, so we've got to go up there and frustrate them in, in, in some areas, but also be quite brave that we know that we can go and get out of their back four. We know we can create chances against them and hopefully we can go and, and pinch something early on. Or certainly as the longer the game goes on, I feel they're going to get more nervous. Um, as we said before, we've got nothing to lose, so we're going to go up there and, and have a real good go and hopefully we can, we can pinch the result. What does the FA Cup mean to a club like Boreham Wood? I think it's fantastic because it's gave, it's gave us a a great platform where the TV cameras and the radio stations have been involved. Um, it's given us the publicity that the club requires and also financially it's given us um, a bit of money from that side of it. But again, it's it's about, it's about just a magic cup, isn't it? I mean, it's been going for a long, long time now and uh, the only way we're going to get real coverage this year is via the FA Cup or if we got to sort of the final of the FA Trophy. So by doing what we've done now, if we can beat Carlisle, obviously Brentford at home, that's going to give us more coverage and uh, it'll keep the season going for us, especially in the cup competitions, because we've got to improve in our league performances. And what about for you as well? Does it bring back memories for you? Um, obviously, slightly different memories because I think, you know, on a personal point of view, sometimes you get a bit selfish as a player, but from... Uh, as a manager's point of view, you know you're you're not only dealing with the team, you're dealing with the club, and you're also dealing with the town, and, and you know you get immensely proud of of being involved in that side of it because it does give the, the whole club and the town and the people who turned up last week a bit of a buzz, and that's why you know really for us to go all the way to Carlisle, and hopefully we're going to take a coach up there that we can get a result and then we can make it nice and, and noisy for Brentford if they come here because obviously we'll probably double the crowd to what we had against Carlisle at home. Yeah, I imagine the, the idea of getting Brentford. Uh, financially as well, what's the chairman said to you about that one? Um, I mean, the privileged side of it with the chairman is that you know we don't rely on the FA Cup money this season. You know we don't budget for it at the start of the season, so there's no pressure on us to do well. But obviously, to get Brentford at home, you know, could we still get one of the live TV games? If we do, you know, Tuesday night could be could be worth as much as a hundred thousand to us if we win the game. And what would that mean to, to Boreham Wood? I mean, I'm no expert with, with non-league budgets, but £100,000 sounds like a lot of money. What could you do with it? Well, I, I think it's, it goes towards the, the new stand that's being built because financially I know the chairman's put a lot of his own money in it, so it just takes a bit of pressure off him to have to keep um, finding the money himself to finance these things. I mean, obviously the stand should be done by the end of December. Um, it just takes that pressure off from, from him financially from a personal point of view and obviously it gives the club a, a stable background where we can continue trying to strive to what we're trying to get, which is conference football. And I imagine you've got a lot of players who have never really played on a stage like they will do on, on Tuesday, never maybe experienced something like that. What will you say to them just before they go out onto that pitch? The main thing is not to have any regrets and, and to go and enjoy themselves and, and to play with a freedom because I feel if they do that then we'll get a performance. Um, if people get nervous, you know, then it's, they're not, they're not going to go out there and perform to the level that we know they can do. So. The main thing is go out there, make sure they leave everything on the pitch, nothing in the changing rooms, and when they come off, they can look at themselves in the mirror and say, I'll give everything today. And if we've not been good enough, then we'll, we'll accept that. But you know, if we come off and we could have done something a little bit better or worked a little bit harder or, or try to do something better than what we've done today, then, then I'll be disappointed with that side of it. Thank you, Ian. No problem.